Hello lovelies, this is the third video in a mini series on what to do on Covid and exams because we are still in the middle end-ish of a pandemic and it is very very likely that some of you will wake up in the morning exam and feel unwell and test positive for Covid and then miss that exam. In that case there will be special considerations put in place. Now every single year people miss exams for unexpected reasons. One of my friends was run over a bus on her way to her maths exam and she missed that maths exam. She did sit her English exam in hospital though which personally I think was a bit brutal for them to make them do that. Anyway every single year people miss exams but this year I think more people are going to be missing exams and there's slightly different rules in place. So exams are starting next week, we are really really close. If you want some great last minute revision then in the link down below there are going to be links to the predicted papers I have written for this year which will hopefully point you in the right way of where you need to fill in any gaps and these have been based on the advanced information so there's not going to be anything in there you don't need to revise. Now, revising for exams is really stressful, but the, the worry that you might miss an exam because you've tested positive is always going to be there in the back of your mind. The current advice is if you test positive or suspect you have COVID on the morning of an exam is to stay at home and miss that exam. However, being worried about other people having COVID is not cause for special considerations, but a, a flare up or a worsening of long COVID now is. Things are changing really quickly. Now, special considerations are not decided by your teachers. They are not based on teacher assessed grades and your teachers have absolutely no input into the, these gradings. They are done at the end, right at the very end, after everything has been marked. There is a special considerations committee who look at all of the applications for special considerations that come in. So if you miss an exam, there is a form that you will need to fill in. Your exams officer will be the person to go and talk to about this. They should know about this already. And it's really important that if you miss an exam, you tell the school you've missed the exam because you've got COVID or because you suspect that you've got COVID, because you've got COVID-like symptoms. The exact definition of COVID-like symptoms is going to be on a website somewhere, but it's the traditional ones like the cough, the loss of sense of smell and a temperature. You do not need to prove that you have COVID. You do not need to have a positive test to show them. Lateral flow tests you now have to pay for, so they are not going to be, well, I know we don't have loads lying around in our house, definitely not enough to test every single morning of an exam and you're unlikely to be able to get a PCR test between waking up and the start of the exam at nine o'clock because they just don't happen that quickly. So it is unlikely that you'll be able to come to go to school and say, look, I have an actual positive test result and schools are unlikely to have lots of lateral flow tests just lying around for anyone to test because they are expensive now. So if you test positive, you need to stay at home, you need to tell the school why you have tested positive so you don't just think you're missing because you do need to apply for these special considerations and just missing an exam doesn't automatically mean that you get special considerations but you do not need to prove that you have COVID. So after all of the exams have been sat, anyone that has applied for special considerations for reasonable reasons and having COVID or suspecting you have COVID is one of those so is being hit by a bus but sleeping in or being worried about COVID isn't a reason for special considerations. After all of the exams have been marked there'll be a committee I assume that sit down and sort out the grade. Now it says that a grade will be awarded if you've sat one whole component. So for maths we have three papers and that seems to suggest you only need to sit one of the three maths papers to be awarded a grade for maths or for GCSE science there are six papers. So that seems to suggest that you only need to sit one of the six papers to be awarded a grade for combined science say. However the exams are spaced out so there is more than 10 days between the first and the last exam so if you're ill for maths paper one hopefully you should be better for maths paper three. Maybe you'll be better for maths paper two to ensure that everyone can sit at least one of the exams. So after all of the exams have been marked these go to a special considerations committee panel 
whatever the exam boards want to call it. And they look at the grades from the other papers and then decide what grade you should have got overall. Now, I can see this being really bad for some people. For example, if you know your favourite topics are on paper three and paper one and paper two really didn't go very well and you know you're going to do really good in paper three because all your favourite topics are in the advanced information but you miss paper three, there is no allowance for the fact that you probably would have done better on paper three because they're just looking at paper one and paper two and taking that into consideration. There's nothing you or your teachers can do about this. The examiners will just look at the data in front of them, which is the data from the exams you have sat. And these do have to be exams. Things like the practical endorsement or speaking exams, the speaking components, are not enough just to get a whole grade for the GCSE or the A-level. It does have to be an actual sit-down written exam. Now, taking this into account, I can see a situation where some people are going to deliberately ignore the government advice to stay at home and want to go in for exams um, because they know the exam that they, on the day that they're ill is going to be the, the best one for them. This is obviously against government advice and not what you should do. There is not a lot of impact that anyone has on the grade you get after special considerations. Um, you can obviously talk about this. If you know this is happening, you can obviously get in contact with your, your university or your college for A-levels and say, look, I missed an exam. It's going to be special considerations. I'm not sure what this is going to do to my grade. And then obviously on results day, I will be here to help you lots with any problems that you guys have and give you advice on how to talk to colleges and universities about this. We are really, really close, guys. I'm going to be doing as much as I can to help you to get stuff out there for you to help you advise for your exams. Good luck guys. We can do this together. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.